Hello again, folks. I am Blunty, and this right here is, of course, the Olympus OMD EM1. And regular viewers will know that I have already published a quite a full and uh, comprehensive review series on this little bugger here. But the one I was reviewing was a pre release model running pre release firmware. This unit right here is finalized. It's got finalized firmware on it and everything. So I've had uh, just the past week or so playing with it to see if anything has changed. And nothing really has. There is a few quirks in the firmware that uh, I knew were bugs in the pre-release firmware that have now been fixed. So it's now a completely flawless performer. And that is a wonderful thing. But there are a couple of things that I did not show you in the original review series. That is the time-lapse mode. And I didn't show you that because... I completely forgot about it, to be completely honest with you guys. And the second thing is the waterproofness or weather resistance and whatnot. And I didn't show you that in the original review series because I was missing the uh, little rubber seal here, the gasket uh, from the uh, terminals where the battery grip plugs onto. So I couldn't do a proper weather resistance test with that missing on my uh, my test unit. So I'm going to do that for you in a moment. I've also been out testing with this, which is the new 12 to 40 mil f 2.8 constant aperture zoom. This is the new pro lens, the first of the pro lens line from Olympus to go along with the first truly professional level uh, Olympus Micro Four Thirds camera that has hit the market, which is the EM1, as we've talked about before. Uh, and I have looked at this before too, and again, it was a pre-release unit running pre-release firmware, but now this is the finalized unit running finalized firmware. And in the video following up to this one, I'm going to have the promised full-on review with lots of shots and details and breakdowns and crops and tests and bits and pieces like you all love from me. All right, so let's talk about the time-lapse feature that I completely forgot to show you before. And there's a pretty good reason why I completely forgot to show you before. is because the time-lapse function on Olympus's cameras, when it has been there, which it, or, no, it hasn't always been there in a lot of camera models. It's only a relatively recent edition with the uh, EP5. The Pen EP5, I think, was the first time we saw it. But it was a very limited time-lapse thing. It could only take 99 shots. And that infuriated me and... Uh, it was basically useless. Who does just 99 shots of a time lapse? But Olympus took my and countless other people's criticism on board and they've completely fixed the time lapse function on this camera. So time lapse settings where it was before in the shooting menu there. So if we go to on and we come across, so we've got a choice of up to 999 frames and that is a pretty useful range. I mean, you can get a, a nice long time lapse with a thousand frames basically. So that's lovely to see. Uh, you can start your waiting time, so you can set how long it waits before it actually starts shooting the time lapse, which is a very handy thing if you want to get it all set up to ready to go. Press the button, walk away, and let it do its thing. Or maybe you just want to make sure you don't get any tripod shake in your first shot or two, so you can set it for a couple of seconds delay before it starts taking the shots, which is handy again. And of course, your interval time, which you can set uh, in up to 24 hours apart or minutes apart, seconds apart. You know, you've got lots of playroom there. And of course, if you are going for the 24 hour limit, you will want to get the uh, battery grip thing, which has the AC input on it, so <laughs> you can actually run for that long. Unfortunately, when I went out to do a really nice time lapse with this camera to show you guys, I forgot to charge the battery. I went out very early in the morning, I was bleary, I've got lots of excuses, but <laughs> I only got a few seconds worth of time lapse, really. But it's, you know, proof of concept, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I don't need more than 99 shots. <laughs> Good. But to get the point, it's a lovely time lapse. No nasty flickering or anything like that. It puts it together in either a series of JPEGs so you can put it together yourself and do post effects, zoom ins and zoom outs and pans across, or it can build a uh, movie file for you. But beware, if you do make it, uh, if you do ask it to make the movie file for you, make sure you're in 16 by 9 mode. Otherwise, you get this weird cropped sort of window boxed thing going on because it forces, you know, your 4x3 picture into a 16 by 9 frame and it spits out a 720p movie file for you, an AVI as a matter of fact. Um, so you're probably better off doing it yourself with the original JPEGs, that way you can do it at 1080p or you know 2K or 4K or whatever you need because you've got plenty of resolution to play with when you're working with the JPEGs. It's just more work on your end instead of having the camera you know, spit out a nice little easy to use instant upload 720p type of clip. But you know it's fantastic to finally have that feature in there in a fully realized, proper, useful, you know, practical way, and I love that very much. So, that's that. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is the water resistance or weather resistance or whatever they want to call it. Now, this is not waterproof, which means you can't submerge it or anything. Actually, let me just show you what we're talking about instead of just telling you about it. 
just uh, give me a moment here and I will fetch the hideous green sheet of absorbency so I don't ruin my tabletop here, which does warp if I get water on it. There's a little stain down here you can't see, but anyway, give me a sec. Alrighty, say hello to the hideous green sheet of absorbency that will prevent me from ruining my little desk here and a tray of water, obviously. Now, this is weather resistant, uh, weather sealed, whatever they want to call it, water sealed, dust sealed, freeze proof, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's designed to keep environmental stuff out. It is not waterproof, which means it shouldn't be fully submerged. But with anything like this that is you know, weather resistant, weather sealed, water resistant, whatever, it should be able to sit in a puddle like this without any problems at all, because basically the only problem with being waterproof as opposed to water resistance is pressure. When you go underwater, of course, you increase pressure massively, and that will force its way through seals. But sitting like this, a uh, real world example of something like this would be if you dropped it in a puddle, for instance. Uh, and you wouldn't want that to ruin your weather sealed camera, would you? So this is absolutely fine like this. I have no dramas, no worries that this will ruin the camera in any way. In fact, let's get the old spray bottle here and, and give it a little spray here. Yeah, wet it down all the way. Actually, no, forget that. Let's let's do this. Oh, I squirted myself on the face then. <laughs> so let's just pour some water over it. Get it nice and drenched. Lens and camera. Oh, oh my tray's overflowing. Thank goodness for the absorbency hideous green thing so let's turn him around and look hey we're still working we're still firing that's actually i had it in order um, there we go now all the factors are working do 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 yeah it's still firing away so yes splash proof puddle proof rain proof waterfall proof whatever you want you know no worries at all that is you know a practical real world advantage to a camera like this being you don't have to panic about it being in the environment if you do drop it in a puddle and cover it in mud and crap like that you'll be absolutely fine so there is proof positive that this camera is properly properly weather sealed nothing is going to get in like i said it is not weather proof do not submerge it otherwise the water may find its way through your seals um but yeah, other than that, absolutely fine. So there you are. That's the two things that I missed from my original review, shown to you, proven, and uh, an update on my original review now that I've got the finalized firmware on this camera. It is one of the most perfect Micro Four Third cameras I've ever used. It is a stunningly good camera, as I said, in my original review series. Gobsmackingly good review camera. And uh, in about an hour or so, I have to pack this thing up and give it back to Olympus because it is only a borrowed unit. But... Um, I really, really, really want to keep it because it is awesome. Now, join me in the next video where we will do a proper full-on review of this new lens, this new Pro Series lens. Do, 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 do. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, anyway, that's it for me for this time. I've kind of sidetracked myself. Thanks for watching. I am Bloody. I will catch you next time. Come back for the full-on review of this lens. Uh, another first of its kind for Olympus. And uh, you don't want to miss the review because, spoiler alert, it, the lens is every bit as good as this camera is, really. Maybe even better. I don't know. You make the decision. See you next time.